Hello, and welcome to Bad Idea Friday here at the Andy Mark World Headquarters. My name is Brett, and I'm our web content manager here at Andy Mark. Not only am I involved with FIRST now, I have been for a while. I'm an alum from FIRST Robotics Competition Team 1529, the Cybercards. And you are? Hi, I'm Nick Lawrence, mechanical systems designer here at Andy Mark. I'm an alumni of FIRST Team 1503 Spartonics way up in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, and I've been doing FIRST since 2005. Here at Andy Mark, our engineers and staff are able to take an idea from just the twinkle in their eye all the way to a perfectly machined, beautifully packaged product right at your doorstep. Whether you're designing robot parts for your brand new infinite recharge at home robot or designing a game for the game design challenge or even developing a solution and a business plan for the innovation challenge, you have to start with an idea. One of those thinky thoughts in your brain space. When starting out, it's important to keep your mind open and don't place unnecessary restrictions on your ideas. It's better to leave things open. That's right, Brett. In the beginning, no idea is a bad idea. No idea? No idea. Here at Andymark, sometimes we catch ourselves getting stuck on designs or we need a way to jumpstart ideas. We have a fun activity that we do from time to time to get our creative juices flowing and to help source ideas from a much larger, diverse group. We call this Bad Idea Friday. I'm a big fan of Bad Idea Friday. There have been many amazing things that have come out of Bad Idea Friday. But Nick, our viewers at home, watching this live around the globe. They have no idea what Bad Idea Friday is. Could you do us all a favor and explain it for them? Bad Idea Friday is unlike any other way to brainstorm. The whole Animark company is invited to participate. From engineers, to operations staff, and even our business office folks. It's important to get unique perspectives from a diverse group of people. Everyone is given a design prompt with a few rules and only one hour to create a submission. That's not a lot of time. Absolutely not. It is very short. <laughs> but a pressure cooker can lead to great ideas. The medium for submissions is intentionally open-ended. You can make a CAD model, draw on a napkin, even make a beautiful diorama, or even use smoke signals if you'd like. The choice is entirely up to you. But at the end, the concept is judged and usually there's a winner of some sort where you mostly get bragging rights. <laughs> Sometimes this process even leads to new products. Now I've seen this quite a few times myself here at Andy Mark, but I'm curious, what's the design challenge today for our contestants? For today's special challenge, our competitors, uh, I mean Andy Mark staff, drum roll, were tasked with designing a mini golf hole using Andy Mark parts and old first game pieces. Okay. I'm a big fan of mini golf. I love it. However, my skill level does not match my enthusiasm. Me either, Brett. <laughs> I am terrible at mini golf. Now, is this product something that Andy Mark intends to sell? And if so, will it feature a water game element? Not necessarily, Brett, but simply having an open-ended design challenge really helps make sure we're creatively thinking. And who knows? Maybe we'll use one part of an idea in a future product. No real word yet if there's going to be water involved yet. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that we have a water game element. You've gotten a brief overview of the rules, and now let's go take a look at how everyone is progressing. I'm a visual learner, and I like to see how it the layout would be and make it easily manipulatable on the floor. Originally I thought I'd draw it, but then I couldn't get the motion in it. So adds a little more variability. Have an idea for a um, golf hole for Putt Putt. And this is the worst golf hole that Putt Putt has to offer, right? It is the house typically that you hit your ball into and it gets stuck in the middle. And usually there's a roof over the top. And so your ball is just stuck there and you have to stick your club through. My mini golf hole sort of laid out. Um, you can kind of see that it, it really sort of came about sort of in four you know, phases. Well, now what happens? We left our competitors alone and allowed them to finish working on their designs. Thanks to the power of movie magic, let's fast forward to some of those presentations. Mine was mostly inspired by 
walking around through the warehouse and just writing down part numbers of pieces that I liked. It kind of centralized around the Entraption Star, just because I think they're cool looking. It has a built-in holder. You may have to zoom in a little bit. <laughs> I didn't read the rules. I didn't actually know there were rules. That's perfect. So hopefully I met them. I don't know if I did. I also did not read the rules. I was aware that there were rules, <laughs> but when I saw my inspiration piece, I just decided to go for it. Yes, Andy. <laughs> Sometimes brainstorming causes ideas to come up at, a, at the spur of the moment. Welcome to hole number seven. It's a par six at the Andy Mark mini golf course. We're gonna start things off here. It's a little bit of a tricky uh, tee box. You're facing right into a giant compliant wheel spinning around rather quickly. It's got a little bit of an uphill slope. I didn't really get a super, I guess my movable part would be the, uh, the timing belts that are run between these wheel extrusions. So you get some nice bounce effect going around there and you're trying to dodge the entraption stars. I went with a, uh, a six inch wheel that's got a, uh, a nice divot into it. So I thought if you got a little up ramp there, that'd be a nice whole spot to, to sink your ball down into. Mine's a pretty simple concept. It's a, it's a pretty lengthy hole, but it has a nice bend in it or a dog leg as they would say. The main feature up front is the fuel ball forest. It is fuel balls hung from some rope from a structure made of peanut and they can move in the wind or you can start them swinging around but you got to get through that maze the fuel ball forest and then once you turn the corner you come up to the ball accelerator halloween costume gone awry and it has been sitting out in the warehouse so this is the very late entry this is um i think the one and only Port Cullis that is, exists in the world. These were destroyed, but we kept one behind for prosperity. And now you've really got, you know, some steep work ahead of you. You gotta hit the ball up the mountain and hopefully you can get the ball up the mountain and land it onto an FLL table. Uh, so you got a lot of room here, a nice strong landing spot. However, there is a robot driving around. So it's fully autonomous. So hopefully it doesn't knock your ball around too much. I surrounded the whole thing with pool noodles. So we keep it safe. You don't end up whacking somebody on the next hole or whatever. I made it a par three. It's a fairly small hole, but Brett had questioned my my par level. So I'm willing to crank that up and change that to an eight if, if people are feeling <laughs> insecure about their abilities. And then once you turn the corner, you come up to the ball accelerator, which is a pair of spinning wheels on, on some motors and gearboxes that if your ball will go up the ramp into that part, it'll get launched maybe into the hole, maybe into the next county. We'll see. This is a par two, so you better be good. If not, well, hopefully it doesn't go in the next county. I found this stack of stones from a former FTC game, and it was a block together, and it just reminded me of a putt-putt golf where it's the house that usually has a roof on it that your golf ball gets stuck in the middle of and you have to get down on your knees and stick your club through there, it's perfect. So you pass it through and I think it's probably a, since there's no roof on it, it's a three car. And any course has to have a hole that has a portcullis on it. This portcullis can be incorporated to, into any of the holes to make them that much better. <laughs> no, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to enhance someone else's hole by adding this wonderful extinct piece of hardware. Are there any Andy Mark parts on that? Well, this is in the Andy Mark building. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the only one that exists. So we own this right now. So this is an Andy Mark part. From there, we kind of play through. And in the great words of, words of Woody Flowers, we've got to go get ourselves some good stuff. So we kind of come past here, we get ourselves some good stuff, make our way through all those obstacles, and then we get into the green. The only thing left to do is to hit the ball and get it into the ultimate goal. I did name it, yeah, it is Strawberry Minefields Forever. <laughs> Here's the important things that we want you to take away. Have a brainstorming session, first of all. You should have one. Every single idea in that brainstorming session, write it down. 
keep track of it, no matter how outlandish it might be. Write down things like, somebody suggests a flamethrower, somebody suggests a catapult to launch the field into space. <laughs> Write it down. No idea is a bad idea to start with. I think maybe, maybe the second or third most important thing is, don't discredit an idea simply because of its presentation. Don't get stuck in the fallacy of the loudest voice in the room is the direction you go. Just because something's pretty doesn't mean it's super thought out against the objective. So the next point is completeness of thoughts. Nick, I think you have feelings on this one. Think about the day you start drawing robots. You know, first week of build season, you start drawing robots on the board of what your robot can do. After you've done some brainstorming about game activities, whatever, not everybody's gonna have the entire robot. That's okay. Especially for a challenge like this, it's okay to not submit a complete idea. While the portcullis is not an entire golf hole, the most memorable golf hole you might ever play could have a portcullis. The entire point of this exercise is to generate ideas. The fourth and final point, inspiration. And there's a couple really good ways to get it. Nick? It is okay <laughs> to not reinvent the wheel when you're coming up with these designs. It is absolutely valid and a really good strategy when working on your robot to take inspiration from external sources. You know, pictures or videos of robots on the internet, your own past robots that you may still have around, or something completely obscure by going to the hardware store. Really, you can find inspiration anywhere. Take the time and look for that inspiration.